Hi, I'm Tom Zimmerman from EMDR's Third Weekend. This post is one in a series about dip your toe in approaches to resources, and this one's about the attachment figure resource. I've been saying and trying to show uh, for several years now that it's possible to take a dip your toe in approach to every phase of EMDR therapy. And I've become convinced that with clients with the most complex forms of wounding, that's one of the most sensible ways to work. Attachment figure resources themselves are a dip your toe in approach because they help model connections between parts of ourselves and do this outside of EMDR therapy. They're modeling these, these, these uh, connections between parts that we're going to need inside of EMDR therapy. And so much of healing, when it does happen, um, happens on a bridge of empathy between the most adults or the most resourced or the most, however you want to say, adaptive parts um, present. Um, these may be also the parts that contain the most adaptive information about what it means to be human. So connecting those parts with the child parts um, that may be still functioning under the rules and carnival mirrors of attachment figures who didn't know how to love right. So again, when there's attachment wounding, we need to just assume that there may be difficulty between different parts, um, different developmental eras of the self communicating effectively. You are going to want to assess for attachment wounding. And the very simple question that I ask, it doesn't tend to be terribly triggering. The nervous system has already computed the answer to this, so it's not a, often not a big surprise for clients. But the question that I'm asking first session typically is when you were young, who was really and consistently there for you? Um, that's, that's the question that I find um, gets us started um, in assessing for attachment wounding. Um, and if they say, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, you know, my dad was kind of a jerk, but I had like 15, you know, people that were close to me. I always knew I was loved by them. That may not be somebody that needs this resource. So here's another important part about working with parts. And again, there's, I'm working on another post now that really does make the point that attachment figure work, that attachment figure resource is parts work. It's one way to do this parts work that you keep hearing so much about. But related to doing this inside EMDR therapy, we need to link this with the AIP model. Because in the AIP model, right, this is how healing happens in EMDR, the difficult stuff, whatever it is, has to connect with, has to connect to, and metabolize into, right now, existing adaptive information. And Shapiro is very clear that if there's not enough of the needed adaptive information, um, whatever you're trying to connect to, if it doesn't have enough adaptive information, EMDR is not going not gonna to work, or it's not going to work efficiently. So. What's also relevant there is you can connect almost any lie to existing adaptive information. You can't connect a lie to a lie. It doesn't work in EMDR therapy. And attachment figure resources can help you rehearse and model what it might look like for the more adult parts to allow this connection with the younger parts. So sometimes the problem, in fact, a lot of the times that the problem with attachment work isn't what the child states believe, it's the judgments held by the most adult right now, quote, you know, rational um, parts of self. So, of course, um, everything we know about attachment wounding is that when you start life in survival mode, that often increases the chances that survival mode is just going to continue well after childhood ends. And absent opportunities, so if this is a really difficult error, absent opportunities to learn other things or to get disconfirming information in ways that are tolerable, it is entirely possible that the most adult parts 
may share the same judgment, blame, and disgust toward the child parts that the child parts carry themselves. So, if an attachment figure resource might model for the adult parts how to be nicer to the child parts um, and to the child to the child parts that are stuck in a developmental era where we're likely to be working, then the attachment figure plays an important resourcing role and an important educational role for the right now most you know rational adult grown-up selves. It models meeting needs in ways that they should have been met. So attachment wounds affect all parts of the self, right? Attachment wounds are big. They're the whales. Using my boat metaphor, they're the whales of memory. Events can be horrible. An event can completely disrupt a lifespan. But events have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Attachment wounds are about everything. They're about belonging, lovability, and identity. Attachment wounds aren't just about why parts of ourselves have problems working with other parts of ourselves. It's the main reasons why our relationships now don't work out and why our attempts at love often feel over and over like a cage. Attachment figure resources have something important to, to bring to the most mature and right now parts. But the main point in doing this is to bring the possibility of what didn't happen to the child parts. Do you see what's happening here? Do you see this pathway as we do this? The deficits of attachment trauma may also be neurobiological. They may be reflected in how different parts of our brain are able to, to communicate with each other. The absence of attachment may not have allowed the creation of the very pathways that are needed and leveraged by EMDR therapy. And EMDR therapy is always parts work. So clients may grumble about this make-believe that we're asking them to do. Um, and we're not asking them to do it for the purpose of denying what happened. So there'll be a separate podcast episode about navigating the difficulties that clients are going to have in developing attachment figure resources. But clients will say, Tom, this, this doesn't, I don't, I don't want to do this. This is silly. This is make believe. We need to be prepared to say, because this didn't happen, it may be important to create the possibility of it. See, if, the, if there's just no pathway here, we need to create a little deer path, and then we need to create a little path, and then we need to create a little road, and then a little highway, and then an interstate. So when things don't happen, sometimes neurobiologically we need to create and experience the possibility of it. And we're doing this at the end of the day. We're doing this so that we can put out the fire of that big radioactive and existential loneliness that defines so much of childhood. That's the difficulty in EMDR therapy. Clients will hit that quicksand where they feel the way they felt when they were, you know, seven years old or six years old or five years old. And they can get stuck there. EMDR therapy can also spread embers throughout the developmental eras where we work. So a difficult session where the client's spending a whole hour kind of stuck in a developmental era, this can start fires in the days after the session ends. But a well-developed and well-practiced attachment figure can put out those embers at the end of a session. The session may be difficult. The client may say, I'm completely pooped. The targets may not clear. In fact, many times when you first start walking, working around your first attachment wound, they're not going to clear. But the session can end and end safely when it does. So back to my whale metaphor, where the adaptive information is the boat, the fish you're catching is the memory. You have to have a big enough boat to land the fish. You have to have enough adaptive information to support what you're trying to land. 
If you're in a rickety canoe and you happen to hook onto a whale of an attachment wound, the attachment figure is a great pair of scissors that allows us to disconnect from any attachment kind of whale that we hook onto. And having it, I'm a lot less worried about, you know, the client or the possibility or even the likelihood of the client hooking onto a whale or a nuclear submarine if we're in the ocean in a small canoe, if we can reliably and safely disconnect from them anytime we want. So in short, attachment figures can help in sessions in ways that aren't horrible. And it's one of the only resources I've seen where a client can go from an 8 or a 9 out of 10 distress to a 1 out of 10 distress within 30 seconds of bringing it in. It is a very powerful fire extinguisher for the very types of fires that may be very difficult to extinguish at the end of an EMDR session. While this can be a powerful resource, it's difficult to develop, and there are a wide range of protective responses against its introduction and its absorption as a resource. Uh, my attachment script, which I'm referencing in the section below, um, anticipates and tries to get ahead of many of these difficulties, but there's some categories a blocking belief that'll make it almost impossible to develop attachment figure resources without additional work. Um, these are also the same types of blocking beliefs that'll make EMDR really difficult without additional work. So you could do, obviously we're doing them both together. These may be, among others, I am dispositionally bad, right? I don't deserve love, kindness to get my needs met. And I don't want to be loved, receive kindness, or get my needs met. With these clients, we may need to try exercises from the perspective of meeting the needs of someone else other than the client. So if you can't extend these things to yourself, we may need to first try them on using the proxy of someone else. So this is a dip your toe in modification. And I may ask the client if they have a nephew or niece or nose of a child or even a ma can imagine a child, maybe a child they saw at a park a few weeks or months ago, that might, at least in theory, be able to use a little bit of additional support. I do try to avoid the client's own children, since this can bring up a lot of parenting guilt and reinforce themes of defectiveness and unworthiness. Um, clients may want to use their own kids as a proxy for themselves. I don't re necessarily recommend it because it, it may simply be too complicated when, when a parent who's in survival mode herself may struggle to be meeting actively all of the attachment needs of her kid. And even if she is, she may be very, very doubtful that she is. Um, so when we develop the attachment figure script using a proxy of this other child, right in in place of the client's younger parts we are trying on these qualities using a less triggering persona than the client himself a little bit like the way a client in sand tray therapy a little child in sand sand you know sand playing in the sand tray may perform um his or her emotional experiences through the persona of a dinosaur figure right so that may be safer, right? That may be um, more developmentally tolerable to, to have a proxy between, um, uh, between you and you. <laughs> so clients that really, really struggle with developing an attachment figure resource can use a proxy as a substitute for the client. And this gives the client an opportunity to try on nurture for something that isn't himself. And remember, we're developing the attachment figure resource as a substitute, right? Because the client isn't healthy enough to bring compassion and nurture to his wounded child parts. This dress rehearsal lets him practice by bringing compassion and nurture to something. So when you develop this resource, the client isn't necessarily prepared to work on attachment wounds in EMDR therapy. 
But when you send this client home to practice this resource and bring compassion, nurture, and adaptive information to someone, right, the client in the process of doing that may have created a little pathway and may be more receptive to trying this resource in more personal ways in a few weeks or a few months. And during that time, you can continue providing psychoeducation about what it means to be born human, about what it means to be born with needs, clarifying whose job um, it was to meet those needs, and normalizing that kids all over the world blamed themselves when they weren't able to get their needs met consistently and safely. So during this time, I'm also reminding my clients, and carefully, sometimes we have to just kind of put things on the table and kind of walk away, um, that they weren't born this way, right? Um, you weren't born believing that you're unlovable. You weren't born believing that your needs don't matter. As a matter of fact, I'm guessing that when you were born, you were born with the ability to announce with your whole body and your whole voice um, what your needs were and that you needed somebody to meet them. But it also makes sense that after that, difficult things happen and we had to learn other things. Right? So just realizing that you weren't born this way can help crack away at the edifice that this is how I am. This is my lot in the universe. So, and once we kind of do that a little bit, it may introduce the possibility that even now we can learn new things that better suit our needs in the present. So in review, attachment figure resources just as starting out is a dip your toe in resource that can help facilitate healing in EMDR therapy and in other approaches. If the client can't resource themselves, find someone that it can resource as a substitute for themselves. This can be helpful while we continue helping the client develop the needed assets for the EMDR journey. Again, we want to be kind to therapists and we want to be kind to our clients because no part of this is easy. So when protections against self-care, self-nurture, and self-directed compassion show up, I promise you these are survival strategies. They exist for reasons and we can't go at them too directly. We sometimes need to introduce disconfirming experiences carefully we need to dip our toe in, get information from that. Sometimes we may need to dip our toe into something even smaller first and leverage that. So attachment figure resources can be difficult to develop for many clients. And in other episodes, I'm going to talk about those um, difficulties. But one of the one of the really, really, really kind of uh, end of the road difficulties that I hear when people try to develop a, an attachment figure resource is when you try to develop one with a client who seems to have very, very strong defenses about bringing any, even the slightest possibility of compassion or, um, or love or anything toward the self, right? Or even acknowledging that the self is, you know, that that the self or parts of the self um, had needs and that those needs were legitimate. So um, give, this, give this a try with your clients that really, really struggle with attachment wounding. Leverage it. Keep checking back in. See if, it can, if this doesn't create the possibility of for you to kind of put your toe somewhere. Leverage it, leverage it, leverage it. Then maybe you can put your toe here and see if the client may be a little bit more receptive, if the client's parts may be a little bit more receptive. To, um, to developing a, an attachment figure script the way I sketch it out in the resource that, that is uh, in the text below here. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for all the good work that you do in the world. Uh, let me know um, if this was helpful. Let me know if you have questions and let me know what you'd like to see next. Um, I really am committed as much as somebody can be committed in their, in their, in the time that they can find, the time that they can squeeze, and helping translate how we teach EMDR, right? How we're almost required to teach EMDR, and how you actually use it effectively 
with people who are in really deep forms of survival, um, which ironically may have been the clients that most motivated you to get your EMDR training in the first place. So again, my, my goal is to help you use EMDR therapy with the clients that, um, that kind of most need it, but, um, but are going to struggle with many, many aspects of preparation. So thank you. Take care. Be in touch.